Using a positive memory that includes an experience of God's presence helps the initial steps in the Emmanuel approach process to be even more effective. I'm going to explain the two new pieces of brain science behind this observation, and then Charlotte and I will demonstrate. We will demonstrate again the initial steps of the Emmanuel approach process, up to the point of establishing an interactive connection with God, except that this time we will use a positive memory that includes an experience of God's presence. The first new piece of brain science is that our relationships are memory mapped. When I say that our relationships are memory mapped, I am referring to the way in which our relationships with other people are carried in the memories for our past experiences with them. For example, I remember the first time I ever met Charlotte. I remember writing letters to her when I was in college. I remember talking to her on the phone every day during our long-distance courtship between Chicago and Portland when our phone bill was the same size as our rent. I remember our wedding. I remember our honeymoon. I remember working together to fix up the different apartments we've lived in. I remember prayer times with her while driving on various long road trips. I remember hiking with her in Glacier National Park. I remember planting flowers together in our front yard garden. I have memories of washing dishes and working on a variety of other household tasks, as she read aloud through the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Chronicles of Narnia. I have memories of Charlotte and I spending time with family and friends etc., etc., etc. I have thousands of memories of experiences with Charlotte, and our relationship is carried in these memories. If I deliberately recall, think about, and reconnect with these memories, this will activate the neurological circuits in my brain that carry my relationship with Charlotte, and thereby prepare my brain to connect with her in the present. In the same way, our relationships with God are memory mapped. Just as with other people, recalling, thinking about, and reconnecting with our memories for past experiences with God will activate the neurological circuits in our brains that carry our relationships with God and thereby prepare our brains to connect with God in the present. Reconnecting with memory recreates just right conditions. And here's the second new piece of brain science. When we reconnect with the memory for an earlier experience, we are recreating, to some extent, the conditions that were present in our brains and minds when we went through the original experience. So when we reconnect with the memory for an earlier experience of connecting with God, we are recreating, at least to some extent, the same conditions in our brains and minds that were present in the original experience. Furthermore, we know that the conditions in the original experience were just right for perceiving and connecting with the Lord since it happened. And therefore, when we reconnect with and re-enter the memory for a previous experience of connecting with God, we are recreating, at least to some extent, the same brain and mind conditions that are just right for perceiving and connecting with the Lord. My observation is that the combination of recalling a previous good experience with Jesus, re-entering the memory, and then stirring up appreciation in this context provides an especially effective doorway, or platform, or bridge for establishing a living, interactive connection with Jesus in the present. It is a very small step from being inside of a memory of a previous experience of connecting with Jesus and feeling appreciation there, to being inside of this same memory and experiencing the presence of Jesus become living and interactive. And as mentioned in training segment number one, After we have established an interactive connection with Jesus, we can pursue a variety of options for what to do with the rest of the session. We can just enjoy spending some additional time with Jesus, just hanging out in the positive memory together. We can ask Jesus a very simple follow-up question. Is there anything else that you have for me today, or that you want me to know today? We can receive comfort from the Lord. For example, by talking directly with Jesus about anything that is distressing us, and then receiving attunement from Jesus. That is, perceiving and feeling the truth that He is with us in our distress, that He is hearing us and understanding us, and that He cares about us and is glad to be with us. We can engage in intercessory prayer in the context of the Emmanuel Approach Interactive Connection. That is, we can focus on Jesus 
and just talk to Him directly regarding our intercessory prayer concerns. We can do spiritual direction. We can focus on Jesus and engage with Him directly as if He is a spiritual director. He's actually a very good spiritual director. We can do emotional healing work. We can go to a traumatic memory and then work with Jesus to resolve the trauma. Or we can pick an issue or question regarding which we would like some help and then look at and think about the issue or question with Jesus. So now Charlotte and I are going to show you what this looks like. What it looks like to go through the initial steps in the Emmanuel approach process to the point that the recipient has an interactive connection with God, except that this time we will use a positive memory that includes an experience of God's presence. To summarize very quickly, first, Charlotte will help me to find a positive memory and then help me to recall and reconnect with the details until I feel appreciation. And again, this time I'll use a memory that includes a connection with the Lord to take advantage of the way in which our relationships are carried in our memories and to take advantage of the way in which reconnecting with a memory for connecting with God will recreate, at least to some extent, the same conditions that work for connecting with God in the original experience. Actually, I'm going to use the Grand Canyon Pentecost Summer Tanager memory from teaching segment number one, except that I'm going to include, as part of the memory, the new piece at the end where I was able to perceive and connect with Jesus. As you saw in segment one, this memory started out as just a beautiful nature memory. But now this beautiful nature memory includes a new Jesus piece at the end. And for this exercise, I'm going to include the new Jesus piece as the God connection part of the memory. When I am connected to the memory and feel appreciation, Charlotte will coach me to offer what I call the Emmanuel Invitation and Request Prayer. She will coach me to pray something like, Jesus, I thank you that you are here with me in this memory, and I welcome your presence. Help me to perceive your living presence. Help me to make the transition from remembering you with me to perceiving you and connecting with you as a living, interactive presence. After I offer the Emmanuel Invitation and Request Prayer, Charlotte will coach me to observe and describe whatever comes into my awareness. At this point in the process, I find that it is especially helpful to focus on Jesus' presence in the memory and notice whether his presence is still just a memory, like a picture in a photo album, or whether he has become alive, whether his presence in the memory has become living and interactive. Often this is clear immediately. I quickly sense something new, spontaneous, and surprising from Jesus, something that makes it abundantly clear that his presence is living and interactive. However, Sometimes it's much more difficult to tell. In these situations, I find that asking a simple question, Jesus, how do you feel about being with me? can be very helpful. Usually, I can sense some kind of new, living response to this question, and this makes it clear that Jesus' presence in the memory is now living and interactive. Finally, as described earlier, once I have established an interactive connection with Jesus, there are a number of options for what to do with the rest of the session. For this demonstration, I'm going to ask Jesus the very simple follow-up question. Is there anything else that you have for me today? Or that you want me to know today? And again, we are pretending that Charlotte is a layperson beginner because we want to demonstrate what it looks like for a layperson beginner to use these tools. So most of what she says will be coming straight from the sample coaching words that are included in the handouts we use for our basic training exercises. So the first step is to find a positive memory to recall and reconnect with. If you have a memory that includes experiencing God's presence, that would be ideal, but we can also just start with any positive memory. For example, a memory of getting a Christmas present you particularly enjoyed, a memory of a special experience from a family vacation, a memory of playing with a favorite pet, a memory of an especially positive time with friends, a memory of a beautiful nature experience, or a memory of thoroughly enjoying your favorite meal. Okay, yeah, I have a memory. <clears throat> I'm going to use the memory from the Grand Canyon, the memory that we, uh, that we used for the demonstration for the first training segment, and that we upgraded 
so that now that memory is a, it's a beautiful nature experience that also includes experiencing God's presence. Okay. Um, so now I want you to close your eyes, imagine yourself being back inside of that original experience, and describe the memory in as much detail as possible. So, for example, what did you see, hear, smell, taste, feel on your skin? What thoughts were you having at the time? What thoughts come as you think about it now? What emotions were you having at the time? What emotions come as you think about it now? How does your body feel? I want you to focus on and describe the details until you feel appreciation. Yeah, so I'm remembering again the, yeah, our mule ride down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. We started really early in the morning. It was cool and clear up on the top of the rim of the Grand Canyon. That was just kind of fun and exciting, preparing to start the trip down. And the mules were, that was a neat experience. They were beautiful animals. It was, it was fun just kind of interacting with and relating to and enjoying our, our animals we were riding. That was fun and they were so beautiful. And just being able to and not have to even worry about watching the trail. When you, they would watch the trail, we could just the whole trip down. We were just, and you, just watching the scenery and the cacti and the flowers and the birds and the view. Just all the way down, we we're just enjoying the the grandeur of the Grand Canyon, and that, that was that was awesome in itself. Mm. Yeah, just thinking, you know, when we we're there are certain spots where the view would open up and it would be particularly spectacular. Looking up 2,000 feet up to the rim, to the top rim, looking down 3,000 feet down to the Colorado River and there might be 5, 10, 15, 25 miles of these ginormous, huge formations, a billion years of geological strata exposed with the erosion of the Grand Canyon and we're, mm. that was it's just the magnitude, the uh, immensity that um, it, the picture, I mean you can kind of get an idea from a picture but you can't really feel it unless you're when you're halfway down the trail and you can see for 20 miles in both directions just these immense spectacular awesome formations and just the magnitude and the hugeness it just had a, a yeah it was just it was awesome it was mm. that was kind of that was that was a beautiful experience just all the way down mm -hmm. enjoying the scenery and then we uh <clears throat> By the time we got to the bottom in the middle of the afternoon, it's like 105 degrees. We're <laughs> hot and sweaty and dusty from being on the trail mm -hmm. all day. And for the last couple hours, it's, you know, 100 plus degrees. So we put our gear in the bunk room and there was that beautiful stream, mm -hmm. you know, 100 feet away or something, you know, pretty close mm -hmm. to the sleeping cabins. So we got our swimsuits on and... It was, my memory was just really chilly, cool, clear. Mm -hmm. It was clear, clean water, mm -hmm. not kind of an old muddy stream. Mm -hmm. um, so we splashed around for a while, got all, all fresh and refreshed and clean and rinsed off. And uh, there was this big rock right in the middle of the stream. And the whole stream was really not that big. I mean, maybe the width of our living room might have been 12, 15 feet across. So we're sitting on this big rock in the middle of the stream, you know, each bank, each side of the stream is maybe six or eight feet away. Mm. And after splashing around in the cold water, you know, and rinsing off, it feels good to be sitting on this, this warm rock. It's like a warm sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Or the beach when you play in the cold water and then you sit on the warm sand. Mm -hmm. And we're just sitting there and just enjoying the, the late afternoon and the 
sun is kind of getting that rich, more warm hue to it. And we're kind of thinking about the day and just remembering, uh, just enjoying the scenery. And, um, and then this summer tanager, mm. this bright red bird, and the, and the juvenile is red and it has some yellow and orange, so it's this red, yellow, and orange bird. <laughs> And it, it doesn't just come down to the water for a couple of seconds to kind of drink for a moment and then wash a little bit. It like hops, it hops along the banks of the stream right beside us, you know, six, eight feet away, so close we could almost reach down and touched it. And it hops along, you know, in the bushes here and then over to the other side of the stream and kind of hops along, hops on the rocks, the little, the small rocks in the middle of the stream and just stays right close to us for... 10 or 15 minutes, which for a bird being that close, I mean, that's actually a long time. You know, I, I have never seen a tanager, this family of bird, usually they're way up in the treetops. I have never in my life, not before or since, mm. my entire life of bird watching, have I seen a tanager behave like this. Mm. So that was kind of, we were both, I think I was probably the most appreciating since I realized how this is just so unusual. Mm -hmm. And and then at one point, as it's hopping around so close to us, it goes into this bush that just you know six or eight feet to my right, to uh, just on the right side of the stream. Mm -hmm. There's this little bush right right on the edge of the water, and it's hopping around in this bush for a couple minutes, and and you say, oh, it's like the burning bush, mm -hmm. oh, and it's. It's Pentecost. It was Pentecost Day, the day this, the day of this memory. It was mm -hmm. actually Pentecost, and where the stream we're sitting in is Bright Angel Creek, mm -hmm. and you're, you're saying, hey, it's like, it's kind of like the Holy Spirit is here with us. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's the, like the burning bush. Um, so that that was all. That was the original beautiful nature memory, mm -hmm. and then when we invited, you know, okay, Jesus, we know you were there. Help me to. We welcome your presence. Help me to perceive your presence here for the first training segment demonstration. And then the first piece, I kind of had that sense of Jesus. He's a little bit of distance, sort of watching us, his face kind of to our right and mm -hmm. up a bit. And he's it's like he's kind of just watching our whole, our whole adventure. He's... It's like watching your kids open a Christmas present. He's just really mm. enjoying watching us uh, just enjoy the creation somewhat. And, just, and, and even your thought about, hey, it's like the Holy Spirit's here with us. He's just enjoying that. And then when we did the piece where I said, Lord, help me to just enjoy being with you in this place. You know, I had the sense that he's sitting to my left and he and I were we're just just quiet, just really calm and still, and we're not talking we're kind of it's almost like telepathy we can, mm. we could know we could sense and feel each other's thoughts and feelings, but we weren't talking at all. We were both just totally quiet and totally still, and just sitting there just appreciating all the beauty in creation. And this is totally the most, this is the, my favorite part of this whole memory now. Because mm. um, one part that I mentioned is usually if I'm with somebody in nature, there's almost nobody I've ever been with that, um, that they want to sit and just enjoy all the details as long as I do. Mm -hmm. So I usually have noise in my head. You know, is, is this person, are they getting restless? Are they bored? Are they, are they getting tired? Do they want to go somewhere else? And, and so pretty quickly as I'm just enjoying the beauty, I start kind of also monitoring. I'm kind of watching the other people I'm with and kind of trying to, and starting to kind of have a little, I mean, caring for them appropriately, but also kind of, it. it wondering and worrying whether they're, you know, when do they want to move on? Um, how long do they want to stay? Are they getting bored or tired? That kind of steals some of the joy. 
and I can feel with Jesus, I mean, part of the deal of being able to feel what he was sensing and feeling, kind of sharing his experience, I could feel totally. He's, he's just completely, he doesn't, need to, he doesn't need to be anywhere else. He doesn't, he doesn't want to be anywhere else. He's not restless. He's not getting bored. He's not tired. He's, he's just totally happy to be there for as long as I want to stay. And he's enjoying being with me, and mm. he's just sharing that experience um, in a way that I really don't ever get to do with other people. Mm. Or I, it, there's nobody else I'm ever with that there's such complete synchronization that I can I can. Well, there's nobody else I'm ever with where I can feel and I can kind of. It's like I'm sharing his heart and mind to the extent where I know what he's thinking and feeling, mm. so I can have. Uh, the depth of the sharing is really cool, adds to the beauty of it, and the complete lack of any kind of distraction or interference or worry. So that was all, that was all really mm -hmm. special. And then that piece where I realized as I kind of stayed with it for a bit, I could, I could sort of feel, um, I could share his, his perception, his experience, and I'm realizing, oh, he can perceive, he can sense, he know, he can know the creation in a way that's like beyond normal human. It's not mm -hmm. just seeing and seeing the scenery and the trees and the flowers and hearing the birds. It's he could, he was aware of, aware of all that, but he he could sort of just sense and feel and perceive the whole fabric of creation. Mm -hmm. The, the whole ecosystem, how it all fits together, and and uh, there's a level. I mean, the more you know, the more elegant and mm -hmm. profound, and the more you can appreciate the beauty. The more you know, the more you can appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, all, and how um, the the opposite of the sort of the the beginner naturalist who just is, takes thirty seconds. Oh. Pretty trees, big rocks. Oh wow, that's an awesome scenery. Maybe for a minute or two, and then they want to go and do something else. And it's like Jesus and I. It's uh, the cloud formations and the geological layers of uh, sedimentary history, and and the trees and the bushes and plants and flowers and lichens and mosses and the stream and the rocks and all the little invertebrates and insects and butterflies and little, the little lizards that were fun. And, and even beyond that, somehow he, he can just sort of sense and feel how the whole fabric of creation kind of fits together and interacts and the web of life, he, he can feel it. He can, he can, it's more than just sort of the ecological theory, somehow he can just directly perceive all that complexity and richness and beauty and creation. Mm. Um, that, was, that was just really profound. That mm. was. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, um, I definitely feel connected to the memory and I feel really grateful and I feel appreciation for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so now I want you to pray something like, Jesus, I welcome you to be with me in this memory. Help me to perceive your living presence. Help me to make the transition from remembering you with me to perceiving your presence as living and interactive. Yes, Jesus, I do welcome you into this memory. I do ask you to help me to perceive your living presence. Help me to to make that transition, to turn that corner from just remembering all, from enjoying this memory of your presence with me to actually perceiving you as living and interactive right here now with me in the memory. And then as you're able, notice and describe everything that comes into your awareness, regardless of whether it feels important, makes sense, or is neatly packaged. Describe any perception of Jesus' living presence, any interactions with Jesus in detail.
Yeah, it's like I'm still really inside the memory. I'm in the same scene. And uh, the visual imagery isn't really changing at all. And I'm still perceiving Jesus' presence. Like I can see, I still have the, uh, I still see Jesus sitting to my left. But I'm not sensing him saying or doing anything new or different. Mm. Part of like the memory is we're just sitting there quietly not doing anything. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it's hard to tell whether I'm still just in the memory for the experience from the, the demonstration from the first training segment or whether I'm having a new experience with the living presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like like I'm wondering, am I having a new experience with Jesus? But it's just so similar to the mm -hmm. earlier experience that, I, that it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. Or I'm I still just in the memory. It, it's it's really hard to tell for sure. Hmm. Well, okay. So I'd like you to ask Jesus, um, how do you feel about being with me? And if you are perceiving Jesus' living, interactive presence, then you'll sense a living, interactive response to your question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Jesus. How uh, how do you feel about being with me, Lord? Huh? And there's just, just right away, kind of a little sort of just a little just a little head turn and kind of a smile, so as I could perceive a little movement, a little living interaction there, but. It's like I'm, he's having an experience very similar to mine, but in reverse. Hmm. It's, it's like I'm kind of feeling, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of uh, somewhat experience, um, I'm sharing his internal experience. And so I'm kind of perceiving his presence to my left and having these thoughts about, oh, it's so neat to be sharing this with somebody who's so on the same page. And I'm sensing, it feels like I'm I'm inside Jesus, and He's perceiving me to His right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like He's having a lot of the same thoughts. Like He really appreciates how much I I can appreciate His creation, and He's enjoying sharing the experience with somebody who's so much on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, he's having the the same thoughts he can he can perceive like that, you know. Carl's not bored or restless. That he can feel how I'm just so totally satisfied to just sit there. I don't need to say anything. I can just just share the experience with them, and we're both kind of sensing each other's thoughts and feelings, and we're so much on the same page, and and both appreciating that each of us are so just fully present and glad to be there and glad to be with each other and not somewhere else and not getting bored or whatever, just that. He's sharing all that same experience, but in the other direction, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool. So yeah, it's, it's obviously clear now that his presence is living and interactive and we're just sitting there just I still can't get words. I've been trying for weeks, for ever since the first segment demonstrations. I still can't get words that fully describe the way he can just sense the whole fabric of the web of life. And mm -hmm. We're both just kind of sharing that and looking and seeing and perceiving the whole, the whole beauty, elegant, complex fabric of the ecosystem and the, the whole package of creation around us and just enjoying that together. Hmm. Yeah.
As explained earlier, if you have positive memories that include an experience of God's presence, then using those memories will provide additional benefits. From the way in which our relationships are carried in our memories, and from the way in which reconnecting with a memory will recreate, at least to some extent, the conditions from the original experience. However, if you do not yet have positive memories that include a connection with God, you can just use any positive memory. And then you can use the initial steps in the Emmanuel approach process to upgrade your non-God positive memory to an Emmanuel positive memory. Like I did in segment one with the Grand Canyon Pentecost Summer Tanager memory. Also, I want to remind you that this basic Emmanuel approach process does not always work right away for everybody. The good news is that if the process does not work for you, it just means that there are blockages in the way. And when you resolve the blockages, you will consistently be able to perceive God's presence and be able to establish an interactive connection with God. 